Today we're going to do an experiment with the S30 and the S50. We are going to use 10 second exposures and we are going to compare some of the data that we receive from those images. And so we're going to set up a plan and um, image for a good share of the night and then we're going to compare some things. So we're going to set up a plan and these are the things we're going to compare. The first thing we will um, compare is the save rate. So we're going to take the number of exposures from each device and divide it by the time allowed and come up with a save rate. We'll also compare the length of time that was actually saved and um, compare those to see which one saved the most exposures. And then once we've calculated out those, I will post the pictures and we will put them side by side so that we can judge the quality of the images that were captured to see which one produced the best image. So the first thing I did is I logged into the C-Star app. Um, I was logged into both C-Stars, but I used two different devices. You can use one device. I've done a video about how you can switch between devices, but I just used two in this circumstance. And so what I did is I went down to the plan and I set up a plan. We're going to do the Sol Nebula and I set it up to start at 8.10 in the evening and end at 6. Let's see, what time was it? Uh, 7.10 in the morning. And so it was going to go all night. It was going to go over um, the, it was going to rotate in the sky because it was going to go past the peak. Um, so I was kind of curious how it would be. I did um, use the mosaic mode on the S50. And on the S30, I did rotate the screen. And when you do that in the plan on the S30, it treats it like a mosaic because it takes the pictures in segments. And so both of these were taking little segment portions during the plan. And so I figured that was um, going to be fairly even. I just wanted to make sure that we got the whole nebula in the plan um, on both devices. The S30 30 um, fits the Sol Nebula in there in its field of view without doing enlarging, but the S50 does not. And so I wanted it to be a little bit more fair in, in its capturing of the image. And so on the S30, I did rotate the screen so that it fit in the same um, diagonal box and then that would produce a mosaic kind of imaging for the S30 so that it would be a more fair competition. You know, we're really not competing against each other because they're going to be um, imaging independently, but I wanted it to be the end result to have a chance to be as good as each other because you know, when you do mosaic, it only takes a small section and then it moves and takes another small section. And so it's not the same as taking the same exposure for the same area all night long. It, it moves it around a little bit. It didn't move a whole bunch in, in this imaging session. And so it shouldn't affect the final outcome. But we are going to devote a long period of time to this. And so that's kind of what I did setting up the plan, and then I executed the plan that night. Here's what my setup looked like for this executing of the plan. The two C stars were set up right next to each other so that they would be at the same um, advantage in the night sky. And they're both set to equatorial mode. So now I have the results. It's the next morning. And I wanted to talk about something we ran into. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the S50. And the reason I wanted to do this one first is because something interesting happened. So it was a relatively cold night and I had the anti-dew heater on. And I don't know if that's what contributed to it. But for the first time, 
Um, since I've had my C-Star, I ran out of battery. I did have a battery pack attached to it. The battery pack went to zero and the C-Star went to zero. And so when I was looking at these images, you can see in this image that uh, it looks like it was missing two images at the very end of the imaging time. And so I, that's how I figured out what was going on is because those images looked a little different. When I clicked on one of those exposures to see what it saved, it actually would um, show the image that it saved. And it looks perfectly normal. It just didn't have enough battery, I guess, to save the picture on the main menu screen. So it did save those exposures. It just looked a little funny in the app. Another weird indicator is it didn't save the watermark telling me how many minutes it saved on the exposure when I exported the stacked image to my phone. And so I went into it and I was able to click on the little information button up in the very top and it said no data was saved. And I think that was just because the battery had died at that point and so it didn't have enough battery life to save all of the data. So in order to get the data on this image, um, all I did is I went into the saved exposures in the subs folder and I figured out which time the first exposure took and then what time the last exposure took and that's the figures I used for this um, data for the recording. So this is the data for the C-Star S50. It, its first exposure was saved at 2016 and the last one was saved at 542. And so that was 566 minutes of possible time and it saved during that time 318 minutes, which means it had a save rate of 56.18%. So a little over half of the time that we were imaging last night it saved half of those exposures. So I did the same thing for the C-Star S30. Um, its first exposure was taken at 2010 and its last exposure was taken at 7.10 in the morning with 654 possible minutes during that time and it saved 345 minutes. So the save rate on this one was 52.752%. And so a little bit less than the C-Star S50. The S50, again, was 56%, and this one was 52. And so here the pictures are up side by side because I had uh, rotated the S30's uh, field of view to get the mosaic action going. It is printed as upside down. So I will rotate that so they're both pointed the same direction. So side by side, you can see that there is a difference. The S30 picks up a lot more of the stars. And so the image is a little bit brighter, um, but the image on the right, the C-Star S50 produces a more, um, I don't know, a sharp image. Um, I will zoom in on some areas so we can look a little closer. So if we zoom in on these two pictures, just in some areas, uh, the C-Star S30, you can tell that it's a little bit muted, and that's probably from the stretching of the pixels to fit that field of view. Um, since they both have the same number of pixels, the S30 has to be stretched to fit the field of view, whereas the S50, those pixels stay a little tighter, and so the images are a little sharper around some of the detail portions of the image. In this image, you can see where the pixelation is starting to degrade the S30's image, and it just becomes a little fuzzier, whereas the S50 is a sharper view. So I guess the summary um, of this experiment. I think overall, they both did very well, and they have different advantages. We've talked about that in previous videos. Um, there's advantages to the S30 over the S50, but when it comes to image quality, I think the S50 definitely wins. And there are reasons for that. I'm sure the aperture plays into that as well as the pixel issue. 
um, but both of them are great images. If you're just doing this for a fun hobby to look at things, either one is perfectly adequate and will produce great images. Um, if you are looking to do post-processing, I would definitely shoot for the S50 that has the higher resolution um, images and exposures because then you can manipulate those better in post-processing. We hope you enjoyed this experiment. We'll be doing some more, so feel free to join us on the journey. Uh, just click the little button that says the College Gateway down in the corner of the video, and that will subscribe you. It doesn't cost you anything, no memberships or anything like that, but we're, we'd love to have you along. And like always, we're wishing everybody clear skies, and thanks for watching.